This is the Beta FPV HX115 HD. It is a three inch ultralight, super nimble, super fast, really amazing flying quad with onboard HD recording thanks to a Runcam Split Nano. This is an amazing freaking quad. You know, a lot of times I get gear for review and it, it just kind of piles up in the corner of the closet until I have time to get to it. I had this thing for almost a month, maybe more than a month before I actually flew it. And I regret that so much. It flies so freaking good, but it doesn't fly perfect. And it had Betaflight 3.5 on it when I got it. Seriously? Let's put Betaflight 4.1 on it and see if that makes it better. And then let's tune it up. Oh yeah. The first thing I want to show you in this video is just how this quad flies on Betaflight 3.5 as I got it. And I'm actually really impressed with how well it flew. I was able to find a few things about the tune that I didn't like. Like at very full throttle, there was a little bit of movement. It just got a little unsteady. And as always, the prop wash handling could be better. But overall, I found this quad to be really controllable. One of the things that I really liked the most about it was a lot of micros, especially powerful and fast micros, have a really hard to manage throttle curve. It's hard to find just the right amount of throttle between going to too fast and hitting the ground. This, I found this quad to be really flyable, really controllable. But the place where I wanna start this video is to show you how to put Betaflight 4.1 on this quad because Spoiler, it flies better on Betaflight 4.1, at least in my opinion. So let's do that and let's go out and take it on a flight and see how good it flies just on the Betaflight 4.1 defaults. So let's go through the steps of upgrading it. If you've done this before, you could probably skip ahead. Go to the command line and I'm gonna type diff all and that is gonna out, output my command line dump, my, my configuration dump, and I'm gonna save that to a file on the desktop or downloads, wherever, it doesn't matter. And then I'm just gonna type BL for bootloader since I happen to be in the command line anyway. This is the easiest way of getting to DFU mode to flash the board. If you do that and you don't see DFU up here, you need the Impulse RC driver fixer, which is a, come on back, there you go, which is an app that will fix your DFU driver. If you've never installed the drivers or if you're brand new to this and you have never installed Betaflight at all, then I have a video about how to install Betaflight and how to get your drivers set up. I'll link it in the video description. Once you have DFU here, you can flash. We're gonna select the Maytek F411. And here in Betaflight 4.1, you have the choice between the MT, the Maytek version and the legacy version. Select the Maytek version. And we've got Betaflight 4.1.0, and we're gonna load and flash. And when that's done, we should see the COM port reappear and connect. And in Betaflight 4.1, it will ask us this question. We'll just hit apply custom defaults. It's just a step, a hoop you gotta jump through. The other hoop you gotta jump through is the first time you update a flight controller to beta flight 4.1 only the first time but you need to go to the font manager and you need to re-upload the fonts and in order to do that you need to have the battery plugged in or the osd chip it'll look like it worked but it won't work so i'm going to plug in my props are off as far as you know i'm going to upload the font the next thing we're going to do is we're going to transfer the configuration over from beta flight 355 to Betaflight 4.1, and you unfortunately cannot just dump all this stuff in. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up, and then I'm gonna put a link to the command line dump down in the video description, so when you upgrade to 4.1, you can just copy this stuff over. The very first thing I do when I start tuning a quad is I wanna get rid of as much of the filtering as I can. Filtering is, it's like, it's like salt in food. You need some of it, but if you have too much, things are bad. So I wanna dial it back until we have just enough filtering that we don't get excess noise, we don't get a trilling oscillation from the motors, we don't get hot or smoked motors, or worse, we don't get fly away to the moon where the quad just won't, let, you just have to disarm it and it crashes into the ground. Those are all signs of not enough filtering. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work the filter sliders in Betaflight 4.1 from 1.0 to the right 
until eventually they get to 2.0, which I've done. Let's see how that flies. The number one thing we did was change the filters to try and improve the prop wash handling. So let's do some fast turns and see about that. So we're doing okay in these like swooping turns, especially as long as we rate, keep the throttle up just a little. But the, um, those turns still have tons of prop wash. Flies so nice and you know, when you're just flying smooth like this, it is so locked in. It's just smooth, controllable, no like washout or weirdness. Uh, when you go through turns, it really, this is a really good flying quad. I can't believe how, how controllable it is, even just here, like just, just doing these straight lines. Usually a three inch just feels all over the place. It's so locked in. I'm, I'm gonna kill this battery with 3.5 3 volts. So let's just, turn it in. It's so it's really good. It's really good. I'm gonna go to filter settings and I'm gonna start turning off the filters. I'd like to, the motors weren't even remotely hot. Didn't see any signs of uh, flyaway. So I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna decrease the gyro low pass too. I'm gonna disable that and save. I probably won't go much further than that, especially on micros. I don't want like a crazy, crazy low filtering. Cause on, this can just be, yeah, I probably won't go much further than that. Let's see if that makes an improvement though. And in short, I think the quad is flying really good. Um, in a minute, I'm gonna do a full throttle punch. Let's listen for, eh, the motors don't, don't sound like they've got any signs of noise. Very hard to bring out prop wash, not impossible. You'll see me bring some out when I do a very sharp turn, but this quad is, is as prop wash resistant as I think it's been. I feel like we've, there, there was some prop wash. I feel like we've definitely gone the right direction. Um, and just in general, it's, it's flying really well. So uh, I'll let you watch a little bit more of this flight just so you can see how it's going. But then uh, we're going to go in and we're going to stop messing with the filters. We've kind of gone as far as I think we should maybe safely go with the filters. And we're going to start messing with the PIDs to see if we can improve things even further. Now that we've taken the filters about as far as we want to take them, I'm going to start adjusting the PIDs. And the first thing I want to do is the quad feels a little bit soft on the sticks. I'm going to raise the stick response gain and get a little bit of a sharper, more precise stick feel. That's not going to be something you're necessarily going to see in the video, but it, yeah, I'm going to feel it as I'm flying. Um, and I'm going to take it from, I'm going to try and use the sliders here rather than uh, just adjust the numbers manually. and. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work well or not, but we're going to give it a try. So I'm going to try taking the stick response, and that'll raise the feed forward from about 90 to about 120. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to raise the D gain to try and fix some of the prop wash. And I'm going to do that. If I want to raise the D gain while leaving the P the same, the way to do that is to boost the P and D gain and then reduce the PD balance. So... We're going to want the P to be at about 42, 46, 30. So we're going to boost the derivative. I'm looking at the D gain numbers now. We're going to take them up from about 35, 38 to, we've raised them by about 10. There you go. That's about 10. And now I'm going to take the PD balance down to bring the P gain back down to approximately where it was. I don't want to add P gain because that's going to make prop wash worse. I kind of want to just add D gain while keeping P gain about the same. So why not just type numbers in? Well, because we're going to try the sliders and just see how they work. And I just want to go immediately. Oh yeah, the, oh, I can already feel the effect of that feed forward on the stick feel. 
I like that already, it's amazing. By raising the feed forward, we could have caused bounce back. So let's check some snap moves and see if we get bounce back. That's pretty good, I don't see any bounce back there. The quad, I can't, can't do it if he... Can't uh, judge bounce back if you're looking at this guy. A tiny bit of bounce back on pitch, but overall it's pretty good. What about sharp turns now? I really want to be able to hear the motors. Unfortunately, I'm a little far away and it's a little quiet. I think we've improved the prop wash. Like on sharp turns like that one, we don't get really any prop wash. See, there was like no prop wash there. We can probably bring the prop wash out. Wow, no prop wash there, at least from, from my perspective. Maybe you'll hear it on the, on the onboard recording. Just a little bit. We made, a, I think this has been a massive improvement. There we go. I got a little bit there. But as long as I'm not going like just straight back into myself, there's almost no prop wash. Let's just do some normal flying. See right there? That's a place where prop wash, let's do a power loop. That's a place where prop wash can often happen. Smooth as butter. No bounce backs. Really, really good. Let's see how controllable it is. Oh, the higher feet forward is so much better. I feel so much more controllable in these turns, and it was already pretty freaking controllable. Let's not hit one, one of my dogs coming through here. That's where they like to hang out. It's so freaking controllable in these turns. It was already really controllable, but now it's even better. Ooh, that was close. I love the throttle response in this thing. All right, that's a battery. And the motors are not hot. It's about mm, 65, 70 degrees in freedom units today. Um, it's, not, it's not a very hot day. The motors aren't hot. They're, they're slightly warm, so I feel fine with this. No signs of motor noise, no signs. It was, I'm really impressed at how much better it got just from a little ham-handed tweaking around. Unfortunately, this doesn't have black box on it, so we're not gonna be able to tune it with black box. Now, until now, I have been avoiding one of the most powerful tools that Betaflight has to make quads, especially little micro quads like this, fly better, and that is RPM filtering. And the reason is that this quadcopter has BLHeli SESCs, and in order to get RPM filtering working on BLHeli SESCs, you have to pay a couple bucks. Don't get mad. Well, I mean, you might get mad. The BL Heli devs just didn't add that functionality to BL Heli S. They were just like, nah, we're focused on BL Heli 32. So then just this guy named Joe Lucid, he did all the work to make it so that BL Heli S could do RPM filtering. And he released the code and he was like, hey, in exchange for my work, I want you to give me, I think it's like a, it's like a dollar or two per, it's like five bucks for a set of four ESCs. We're gonna see. So if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. Don't be mad at Joe Lucid though. If you wanna be mad at anybody, be mad at the BL Heli devs who decided not to build this feature into BL Heli S, although, I mean, that's just their prerogative. Let's see how that can make a difference. We're gonna hit activate ESCs. After the flash finishes, all the ESCs will show activated and licensed, and then the next thing to do is to flash telemetry to all of them. Now that that is done, the ESCs should be ready to go. I'm gonna disconnect from here. Oh, very cute, thank you, Joe. Got a custom startup tone. Enable bi-directional D-Shot. We'll go over to the motors tab. We'll plug in a battery. And we should see the error percent go to 0%. It's not working. All right, see it's not reading it. Seems like bi-directional D-Shot isn't gonna work on this one today. Um, I tried setting it up, I got through all the steps, and anytime I enable RPM telemetry, the ESC just doesn't see the signal. So I don't know if that's an issue with this flight controller, this ESC, or whatever, but 
I guess that's going to have to be a topic for another day. In the meantime, this is a great tune. I feel like this quad is flying amazing. Could, could we try disabling the gyro filter to get? Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's just say, let's just go bonkers. Let's disable that gyro filter that I said was too risky. See if we can make this quad fly even better. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll make up for not getting JSC, JSC working by just, you know, doing a little working without a net. Let's do it. We're going to go to PID tuning. We're going to go to filter settings. And we're going to disable this gyro filter. No, no, I'm smarter than you. Or dumber. <laughs> and save. Let's fly it. Well, there it was. Yeah, it flies good. Let's see if the motors are hot. Nah, they're fine. They're fine. I mean, should maybe be testing this with some bent up props, but they're fine. Okay, for real this time, we're gonna finish up. Um, I took one step past the edge, but for you guys, it was worth it. The quad's still flying good. Uh, the, the motors are cool. The prop wash isn't perfect, but maybe that's a limitation to what we could expect on a, on a, I don't know, but that is gonna do it for this PID tune. This is an amazing flying quad. Go check out the full review if you wanna see my thoughts, my in-depth thoughts about this. It is linked down in the video description. And if you wanna know more about anything you saw in this video, what's an RPM filter? You know, a, a JESC? There's links to all the videos I've made about that stuff also down in the video description. Oh, one more thing. There's also affiliate links to this quad. Yes, if you wanna buy this quad after seeing how good it flies, and I d seldom do I just go, yes, this is very good. This is good, you should buy it. But this one, this is very good. If you like many micro quads and you like quads in general, this is worth, very, very worth considering. There is a link to it in the video description. It's an affiliate link, I get a small commission if you use that link, and it sure would mean a lot. Thanks so much for watching, happy flying.